Sterling here with Oceanside Film Festival once again. We have a treat for everyone today. Today we have TJ Storm in the house here at Oceanside Film Festival Star Theater. And I'm just going to be discussing uh, his professional career, aka nerding out a bit, regarding uh, one of my favorite industries, the voice acting industry, especially the video game type. In my opinion, the uh, video game industry, especially with uh, voice actors, has gained a lot of momentum as of recent, um, in which um, I've actually spoken to a lot of voice actors and on TV saying that they've seen a big hierarchy in which the video game industry isn't taken as seriously to certain execs and they see that big change coming, which is rightfully so. And uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about kind of the journey you go on through the video game industry circuit um, as opposed to maybe um, commercial or uh, film voice acting and the differences that you see. Well, there's a lot of differences and there's a lot of similarities. The big thing is I, I, I started for voice acting. I started as doing the motion capture. I do a lot of motion capture for a lot of uh, video games and a lot of films. But I started officially as a film actor. So doing the motion capture, I would have to vocalize a lot of the performances. And while I'm doing the, the vocalizations, whether it's, get over here, or whatever it is we're doing, the director's like, oh, wow, that's great. Can you do the voice? Would you mind coming in and doing the voice? And we're like, yeah, sure, you can pay me again. That'd be awesome. So, so it worked out well for me that uh, I got to go in and often voice the characters that I was already mo-capping if they weren't already voiced. Sometimes they, they, mo they voice them ahead of time, and then we come in secondarily. But that's how I got into the business, and uh, it's been wonderful. There's so much variety. I mean, sometimes you're an imp, and you have a particular voice that's very small. Sometimes you're an ogre, and you have this big, bassy voice, and, and it's, it's a blast. So we get to do so much fun stuff, and, uh, and as far as voices... It's a blast. It's an absolute blast. So, yeah, it's fun. Video games, I mean, movies, they made, what, $9 billion last year. Video games made $43 billion. So, I'm not complaining. The work is there, and it is fun, and, uh, and I'm a video game fan. So, I'm a film fan, too, but, I mean, you go home, and you play video games at the end of the day, and that's a blast. Yeah. And you're a giant kid. It's wonderful. Um, I've heard some people actually compare video games to being a movie that you choose when you want it to end. And I'm wondering, um, has your journey in voice acting made you love video games more than you originally did? Or were you already a fan before you even laid a single word on the mic? I was born a geek. And I don't admit that openly a whole lot because it's not cool. Well, it used to be not cool, to be honest. Now it's super cool and it's the thing to be. But I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. I grew up playing role-playing games and vampire and LARPs and just being the weirdest kid in school. But now I get paid for it. Yes! Of course, you have another extensive background, um, especially in uh, the more martial arts uh, region. I'm wondering, like, um, was that helpful um, when bringing mocap into the uh, essence of what, of what you do as well? Or was that just another interest that just happened to fall in line with, hey, can you do this since you can do that? You know, it was a really, really weird journey. I, I just wanted to be more popular when I was a kid. And I was like, okay, who's popular? Oh, the dancers are popular. So I started dancing. And I was already doing martial arts, and it was all movement-based. I loved it. And uh, long story short, I got hired to be a mannequin in a clothing store. It was one of the first BBs, and I, I was doing this. And flash forward 15 years, and somebody goes, hey, I heard you can do a robot. Uh, you want to work on this movie? It's, it's a little thing called Avatar. I'm like... Sure, sounds fun. And I went, and I didn't know what it was, and I ended up being able to do some of the, the motion capture for mm -hmm. the big, uh, they were called amp suits in uh, uh, Avatar. Yeah. And uh, from then, we, we did other stuff. I've worked on other movies and doing all kinds of creature movements, creature movements for Godzilla, creature movements for all kinds of stuff in the video games. We have a movie coming out right now that can't talk about yet, but it's going to be spectacular. It's a great superhero character, and... Uh, uh, you'll probably see it next year. So let's keep our fingers crossed, and it'll be really, really cool stuff. What's something that you can kind of pass on to the huge amount of people wanting to get into this industry um, that would be beneficial to them knowing um, beforehand going in, and especially on their road towards perfecting their craft? Well, I mean, there's a lot of artists out there. Artists start from dreamers to the people who you watching Brad Pitt and all of those people. The only difference between the two are the ones who follow through in a disciplined fashion more than anything else. If you're serious about this industry, take your classes, do your work, be super serious about it, hit it all the time, keep on dreaming, never stop dreaming, see yourself where you want to be and then start forging your path there. 
but be serious, be disciplined, and, and do the study, do the work. The person who's fun to work with and has the talent will get the work. So stay focused and, and dream your dreams. I'm just happy to be a part of the Oceanside Film Festival here in uh, Southern California. And uh, for all you filmmakers out there and actors and aspiring artists, keep dreaming, keep living, stay focused, and move forward. Peace.